Hello, I'm Dr. Paul Jeffords, an orthopedic spine surgeon at Resurgent Spine Center in Atlanta, Georgia. If you are someone who is suffering from back and leg pain from a degenerative disc or stenosis of the lumbar spine, and you have failed to improve with non-surgical treatment, you may be a candidate for a surgical procedure called a minimally invasive surgical transforaminal lumbar interbody fusion, otherwise known as an MIS T-lift. An MIS T-lift is a minimally invasive alternative to a traditional open laminectomy infusion. Compared to the open approach, the MIS T-lift can be done through smaller incisions with less muscle tissue disruption and less bleeding. This can result in decreased pain and a faster recovery for the patient. The surgery is done to remove disc material and bone spurs that are pressing on one or more of the nerves that are exiting from the spinal canal in your lower back. Once the disc is completely removed, a fusion device filled with bone graft material is put in place of the disc and supported with titanium screws, allowing the vertebra above and below the disc to fuse together. What I would like to do in this video is describe the surgical procedure, talk about what steps you will take in preparing for the surgery, what will happen during the operation, and what you can expect in your recovery. After you have been evaluated by your surgeon and it's been determined that you are in fact a surgical candidate, you will probably want to discuss the next steps with your family and possibly pursue a second opinion. Once you have made the decision to proceed with the surgery, the first thing you will want to do is to schedule a date for your preoperative consultation. It is during this session that you will have the chance to meet with your surgeon and staff, ask any questions you may have, and sign the consent form for surgery. At this time, you will be prescribed any medications for postoperative care and may undergo additional preoperative tests. This may include a chest x-ray, EKG, and blood work. You will check into the hospital or surgery center the morning of your surgery. Your anesthesiologist will bring you into the operating room and put you to sleep for the operation. There are usually two nurses in the OR and a surgical assistant helping your surgeon with the procedure. Once you have been positioned on the operating room table face down, your surgeon will make a single small incision in your lower back, about three to four inches from the middle of your spine. For a single level fusion, the incision is typically one inch in length. An x-ray machine called a fluoroscope is used to image the spine and pinpoint exactly where to place the incision. Dilating tubes are placed through the incision onto the facet joint of the spine using the fluoroscope to guide their position. The tubes separate the muscle fibers and provide access to the spine without cutting through the muscles. A retractor is then placed over the final tube to hold the muscle tissue and the tube is removed. A light source and possibly an endoscope or microscope may then be attached to the retractor to provide visualization for the surgeon during the procedure. Through the retractor, your surgeon is now able to remove the facet joint and any bone spurs that are pressing on the nerves. This also gives the surgeon access to the disc. Special instruments are then used to remove the majority of the disc, creating a space between the vertebra. A bone graft or fusion cage filled with bone graft material is then placed into the disc space through the retractor, restoring the natural height of the disc space and providing stability as it fuses. Next, titanium screws are placed into the vertebra above and below the disc through columns of bone called pedicles. Guide wires are placed into the pedicles using x-ray guidance, and screws are placed over the guide wires and screwed into the pedicles. After the screws have been placed, the guide wire is removed. Next, a rod is positioned between the screws and fastened in place. The rod and screw instrumentation provide stability to the spine and prevents the vertebra from moving while the bone graft fusion takes place. A second incision may be made on the opposite side of the spine to place additional screws and a second rod. The incisions are closed with resorbable stitches that are placed beneath the skin. A typical MIS T-lift procedure lasts approximately two to three hours, depending on the number of discs to be fused. Immediately after surgery, you will be taken to the recovery room for one to two hours while the anesthesia wears off and your vital signs are checked. Afterwards, you may be discharged home or you may stay overnight in the hospital and be taken to your room where you can visit with your family. Your surgeon will speak to your family while you're in recovery and give them an update on your procedure and condition. The nurses will get you out of bed after surgery and you will be strong enough to walk and climb stairs. Most patients are able to go home either the day of surgery or the morning after surgery. Occasionally, some patients will stay an extra day. You may ride in a car or airplane upon your release from the hospital. You will be given pain medication and a muscle relaxant to help control post-operative pain and spasms. Please ensure that you do not drive or operate any heavy machinery while on this medication. Approximately two weeks after your surgery, you'll have a post-operative visit with your surgeon and your incisions will be checked. You may return to sedentary office or desk work two to three weeks after your procedure. 
If your job demands that you are involved in heavy lifting or frequent bending and climbing, you should wait six months before returning to this type of activity. You can return to moderate duty in three months. Typically, your surgeon will see you again to check on your recovery process six weeks after the surgery and then again at three and six months. When you return for your post-op visits, an x-ray will be taken to check on your fusion. Complete fusion is usually seen to be solid at three to six months. You may resume sporting activities such as golf or tennis six months after your surgery, provided that the fusion is solid. As with any surgical procedure, there are inherent risks. There are three different categories of risks arising from the surgical procedure. There are risks associated with anesthesia, risk of complications that can happen during the operation, and risk of complications that can occur after surgery. Risks of anesthesia are rare in healthy patients, but may include the possibility of allergic reactions to medications, seizures, heart attack, stroke, or death. Risk of complications during the operation include risk of nerve injury and risk of injury to the nerve sac, which can cause a spinal fluid leak. The risk of these complications is around 1%. Finally, after the operation, there are complications that can occur. There is about a 1% chance of infection. Another risk after the surgery is the bone fusion not healing, which can lead to recurrent pain and possibly the need for further surgery. Even if the fusion heals perfectly, a small percentage of patients may continue to experience back or leg pain. You should talk to your surgeon about these risks. The minimally invasive surgery approach to the T-lift procedure can be safely performed with little trauma to the surrounding low back muscles. MIS procedures may result in less post-operative pain, shorter hospitalizations, and quicker patient recovery than traditional open surgical methods. Surgical intervention should always be the last resort, but when all other treatment options have failed, this procedure can often provide significant relief of back and leg pain from a degenerated disc. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. You may have additional questions, and if so, you may want to consult with your surgeon.